Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Inside the Lair. I'm your host, Kirby Vandy Walker, and today is Wednesday, November 9th, 2022. What a finish to the volleyball season last week as the Knights went toe-to-toe with the two-seeded Cougars from Mabel Canton. The Cougars got out to a one-set lead after winning the first set 18-25 before the Knights responded, picking up two wins in the second and third sets to take a 2 one lead going into the fourth but the Cougars who had been there before have uh, they, they, they kept their cool and they kept on playing volleyball and ended up winning the fourth set so we went into the fifth set tied two to two and it was an epic finish as Mabel Cougars excuse me the Mabel Canton Cougars ended up winning 17 to 15 and uh, just a, a really good volleyball game that just unfortunately did not go the Kenyon Wanamigo Knights way. But what a season that they had. A top three finish in the section. Uh, I believe second place in the Gopher Conference. And one of their teammates, their players, Tess Erlinson, was named to the Class A state volleyball team earlier this week. A really awesome and great recognition to be named to the Class A all-state team. So congratulations, Tessa Erlinson who also officially signed her letter of intent to play volleyball for UW-Stevens Point yesterday. Um, In other honorary news, the football team held their postseason banquet and five Knights football players were named to the all-district team. It's kind of like the all-conference team in other sports as there's no conference in football. It's called the district. But anyways, those five players are Alex Lee, Cal Libke, Trent Foss, Dylan Bartell and Soren Kylo. So congratulations to those five as they held their banquet on Sunday night. And uh, hopefully three of them anyways will be coming back next year to play football along with a bunch of others. And we look forward to another great football year next, next fall. All right, moving on to other school news. The flu clinic is coming to our school uh, November 10th. That's tomorrow, Thursday, from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., See Shannon in the office for more details. On Saturday, November 12th, this Saturday, the Haunted Castle Cheer Competition will be happening in our high school. Uh, this competition starts at 10.30. We'd like to see a great crowd of uh, visitors there. You may have seen some art projects hanging in the hallways lately. Mr. Jackman is doing something really unique with his students' art projects, and Noah Wallacher was able to catch up with Mr. Jackman to see what it's all about. Okay, so I'm here with Mr. Jackman, and he's going to tell us a little bit about that art project that's going around school today. So could you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, so this is a show that will be up for several weeks. Um, I have canvases, or sorry, paper in, in, uh, in frames, in oak frames, hung around the building. You'll notice, that regardless of what section of the building that you're in, that you'll see an oak frame with a student artwork, whether that's the lunchroom or the middle school wing. I have across from the art room next to the library a description of what each show will be as it comes out. So this current show will be up for the next couple of weeks. All right. um, If a student wants their artwork put on the walls, how would they do that? So this current show is in our uh, 2D section of art. We will have... Um, open shows where students submit work towards the end of the year. Um, I'll have something in the spring semester where students can just submit um, artworks for show. Um, but this one is part of a current um, class project. Cool. Um, is this available for all grades or just a certain? Or Right now the show is, is a 2D art and is a high school art class, but it could be a 5th grade show or a middle school show or a ninth grade show. It just happens to be 2D art up right now. Oh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Noah, and I think it's a really cool idea to display students' work. We're going to go to our senior decision right now. This week's senior, Wyatt Rauch, has decided what he will be doing after high school. Um, hi, I'm Wyatt Relk. I go to Kenyon, Kenyon Winnemingo High School, and after high school, I want to be a welder at DR Tech. Um, if I could give advice to a younger kid, it would be if you have something in life that you want to do, uh, follow it and pursue it. Well, congratulations, Wyatt. 
And uh, he also wants to give a shout out to Mr. Chuck Larson for being an inspiration to his welding, his welding passion and introducing him to welding. So thank you, Mr. Larson, for impacting Wyatt. Um, let's move on to Carly's task this week was to make a documentary of a teacher. And she chose Mr. Wibben, and here's what she put together. Mr. Wibben was born on August 18th in 1960 at St. Mary's Hospital in Rochester, Minnesota. He grew up in Stuartville and was the middle child in a family of seven, with two brothers and two sisters. He was a quiet kid and in his own words was an okay student. He enjoyed going outside and exploring as a kid and wanted to be an archaeologist. While in high school, he worked as a farmhand on a local pig farm. During his senior year, a junior girl approached him and they began dating only to split up a year later. He graduated in 1978 and enrolled at RCC, now called RCTC. He quit school and got married to the same girl he split up with after reuniting at his place of work. They ended up having four kids, three girls and one boy. He later went back to college and got his teaching degree from Winona State University. He started teaching at Stuartville in 1987 and started coaching track in 1990 for Cass and Vanderbilt. Then spent the last 25 years at Kenyon Winamingo teaching 7th and 8th grade science. He's been married for 42 years and has been blessed with six grandkids. If he were not a teacher, he would more than likely be an archaeologist or a DNR officer, as he continues to spend his free time outdoors. Well, thank you, Carly. Thank you, Mr. Wibben, for being willing to help with that project. Addison was tasked with this day in history, November 9th. Take it away, Addison. Thank you, Kirby. Today is November 9th, and on this day in history, in 1985, a 22-year-old Gary Kasparov became the youngest person to become the world chess champion. In 2007, European Space Agency launched the Venus Express, the first European space spacecraft. The first European spacecraft to reach Venus. In 2006, Pluto was denounced as a planet to a dwarf planet. In 1984, Nightmare on Elm Street hits theaters. November 9th is National Louisiana Day. In 1909, an English aviator flew with a pig in a basket attached to his plane. I guess pigs can fly. Well, thank you, Addison. Dakota, she was putting together a game segment called Egg Roulette that uh, is kind of a spinoff of Jimmy Fallon's Egg Roulette. And here is what she came up with, Dylan versus Haley. Okay, we're doing trivia, and whoever gets the question wrong gets an egg crack on their head. So the first question is, the first day of the 20th century was? The 20th was January 1st, 1900. 1901. 1901. That's, what I, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. I just said 1901. <laughs> no, he gets an egg on. You heard 1901. Oh, oh, just, just put it on the side. It's not 1901. Give me your head. Give me your head. Bam. It'd be 1900. Do I crack it and then turn to play? No, just play. Oh, wow. Of course, that's my luck. Okay. If you cut a quarter into thirds, how many pieces would you have? If I what? If you cut a quarter into thirds, how many pieces would you have? I don't know one. I don't know. Okay, you get to you get to put it in. Okay, okay. Mm, <laughs> this okay. one don't feel hard boiled. Oh, oh my oh, god. Okay. Okay. Um. If I have five apples and you have four apples, how many more apples do I have? If you have five apples and I have four, what kind of trick question is this? <laughs> how many more apples do I have than you? You have one more apple than me. Then you get to put the egg on her head, I guess. Wait a minute! Yeah, because he got it right. He got it right, so he just put the egg on you. Hey, hey. No, you don't. Oh. <laughs> Next question. Um, what animal's father is a boar? <laughs> is it a pig or a boar or something like that? Oh, 
Branches the of the judicial? US. That's one. Shoot. I know them too. <laughs> Legislative, yeah. judicial, and ex executive. Executive. <laughs> Haley, you get another one. It's nine. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, you got lucky. You got lucky. I cracked like half of them already, so. Okay, what was the most widely grown crop in the middle of col middle of colony? Corn. Corn. Wheat. Incorrect. We don't. Go for it. Oh, you. Oh, you All right, that took a little bit of time to clean up, but uh, we were able to get it done. Thank you, Dakota. <clears throat> Logan is back with another Minnesota Sports Recap. Take it away, Logan. One. Welcome to this week's Minnesota Sports Recap. And to start the recap off, the Minnesota Timberwolves played the New York Knicks. The Knicks dominated the whole first half, and that pretty much was the second half, too. The Knicks won against the Timberwolves. But the Timberwolves will redeem themselves tonight against the Suns, as we are at the Suns Arena ready for the game tonight. Kirby, he's late on the plane, but he'll be here tonight, though. On Saturday, the Gophers played Nebraska. It was a defensive game all game. Nebraska went to halftime up 10-0, but the Gophers ultimately were able to win that game 20-13. So the Minnesota Vikings played the Washington Commanders in Kirk Cousins' old stopping grounds as he was a former commander, and you like that? As right away on the first drive, the Vikings scored this touchdown to Justin Jefferson. The mark is in motion. You've got Jefferson down here, a lot of choices. Floating one for the end zone, and Jefferson reaches up, pulls it in, and... They went to halftime up 7-3, but then the Commanders came out right away in the third quarter with this deep play. Thanks to the refs. For not turning it over, and they haven't so far. As Heineke avoids pressure and heaves it deep. Samuel, the officials throw it out. Samuel makes the catch. The then the commander scored another touchdown after that. But then they came back down and threw an interception to Harrison Smith. He throws middle high, and it's intercepted. Harrison Smith with the takeaway. And Smith inside the 20. Inside the 15, then the Vikings scored this Dalvin Cook receiving touchdown. Bottom of your screen. Cousins the other way. And in the end zone, Dalvin. And then the Vikings got the ball back, chewed out of the clock, and kicked game-winning field goal. Yep, that's it for this week's Minnesota Sports Recap. See you next time. That's it for this week's show, everybody. Thanks for watching another episode of Inside the Lair. Just, uh, just an announcement. Tomorrow is Veterans Day. Thank you to all the veterans for their service and their continued service to our communities. We, all want, we want to mention that tomorrow's 10, 10 a.m. Um, assembly will be live streamed on our KW Activities YouTube channel. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.